Tom, I'm really interested in what you've learned from bees that it can help us look at a very complex problem in the urban environment. How are we going to repartner with nature in the city? The thing that I've learned from the bees is the power of collective intelligence in solving this kind of problem. That is to say, the power of a group of individuals coming together, pooling their different pieces of knowledge about that problem, and then working together to find a solution to the problem. The bees do that par excellence. Okay, so that's, that means that we as individuals could traverse our own locality and maybe come up with different parts of the information we need to design cities better. Exactly. The bees do illustrate that very powerfully because when they need to find a new home, which is a very important problem for them, it's life or death in fact, they send out scout bees, hundreds of scout bees from a single swarm to look for potential home sites. Those bees search independently for their particular solutions. They come back and share their ideas and then work together to identify which of the various sites that has been found is the best one that, for their new home. Okay. You've applied this in, in meetings and you know of examples. Yes, I've used it um, to the amusement initially of my colleagues to run our department the faculty meetings, which meet each month. And there, when we have a really sticky issue, or even a not a sticky issue, I like to say, here's the issue, and I, I'm, not, I'm gonna moderate this meeting, but I'm not gonna run this meeting completely. I do wanna hear about everybody's ideas for how to solve this problem. And then, once we've gone around the table where everybody's piped up on what they thought about it, then we start a discussion. And off, very often, one solution emerges over time as, as the one that seems to make the most sense, which means it's convinced most of the people in the room that that's the best one. Okay, so there's no one who's left thinking, I had the best idea in this room and nobody listened to me. There might still be a few people thinking that, but they probably at least feel that, okay, um, I, that I still think my idea was the best, but I can see collectively more people, a lot more people like that other idea than mine. So, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. And, so they at least buy in that this is an acceptable solution. Okay, that sounds very interesting. And in terms of the urban situation where we have what's called consultancy and we're asked questions and we answer them and then they may, may not be applied to the, the decision at the end of the day. And a lot of people feel cheated. So in this situation, it's, it's a group coming together, throwing ideas around, and they're, they're involved in a process. Yeah, I, right. I bet those people feel cheated because they didn't hear the discussion, which led to the decision to go to this option, which was not their chosen one. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a small enough group of people, then they can all hear, you know, they can hear the discussion and feel like they were part of the and even participate in the discussion. Mm -hmm. So how do these ideas that we've learned from the bees relate to some of the issues you've faced in urban design. There usually is a, a real problem with a, a consultation process that happens and then the individuals involved don't get feedback as to why their ideas haven't translated into the design or even if they have, how they have. And at the end of the day, the whole concept is taken away from them and they don't really feel part of it. So I can see how what you're doing, what the bees do, could be a far more effective approach. That's right. Every scout bee is, um, is involved from start to finish in the process. I know my colleagues in a department meeting would not want to just be reporting ideas to me and then have me make the decision based on their ideas. Um, no, it's important that both at the process stage of collecting the information and processing the information that the individuals are involved. So people have enough buy-in and acceptance yeah. of, the, of the decision that comes out. Right. And I usually try to have at least 80% buy-in. If you have less than that, you just have a, a large enough majority of people that uh, aren't really happy with the outcome. And do you think that process actually brings out information from people, it, people who maybe wouldn't normally oh, contribute? Definitely, it brings okay. out information. Many people are, are, are reticent and um, need a little coaxing. And if somebody doesn't offer an idea, I'll come back to them and they might say, well, I want to hear some of what others have said before I comment, and I make sure to come back to them. But the main technique is to go around the room, have some systematic way to make sure everybody has a chance to speak.